friends. Today we've got another little unboxing. This, this is a smaller unboxing than I've done in the past. Uh, but what you'll see is we're getting the final components together to create a VRC-92, AN slash VRC-92. Uh, and we'll also show a couple of uh, small Harris items that I picked up along the way. Okay, so let's look at we, what we have here today. So to start with, we've got this cable. What's important about this cable? Let's have a look at it. This cable is a cable I've been looking for uh, for quite some time. And um, let's open it up here. And if you can see, it's a four pin female and uh, a pair of flying leads here for 28 volts, probably 12 to 28, 28 probably to work just fine. And what is it for? Well, it's for this adapter that I picked up several years ago. Uh, this adapter goes between, well, I'll show you. Um, it works for a radio like the 7850 MHH. It also works for the RF310M and finally also works for the PRC-152. And what it does is it goes between the battery and the, and the radio. Let's see if we can get this bat battery off. And uh, goes here. It always only happens when you're trying to shoot a video. Okay, there we go. Uh, clips in just like a battery. And this will allow you to power the radio you can see this, power the radio from vehicle battery. Uh, as you can see here, hopefully, uh, it says uh, 10.5 to 32 volts. And, but not only will it let you power the radio, but at the same time, it will charge the battery. The battery clips in underneath. Okay, that, that's rather ridiculous looking. You know, I, I can't imagine uh, walking around, <laughs> walking around with this. Uh, I mean, this is just huge and quite uh, funny looking. Um, but I mean, theoretically you could, and whenever you get back to the vehicle and you wanna, you, wanna, you wanna charge it, you just plug this in and you're off and running. Um, yeah, uh, the other neat thing about this is it has three tapped holes. So I believe with some posts, you, can, you could mount this into a vehicle. And uh, if, for example, if you didn't wanna operate the radio, let's see if I can get, get this disconnected now. Okay. There we go. Uh, so if you didn't want to use the radio, but did want to have a charger in the vehicle, you could mount this somewhere in the vehicle uh, and then just put a battery, uh, and then just put a battery on uh, to charge it. So anyway, that's this cable, looking for it for a long time. Let's see what else we have. Okay, next up, we have a pair of LS671 speakers, these are brand new. Brand spanking new. Um, I will uh, endeavor to get this operational with uh, some of my Singar stuff and do a video on it. Um, the kind of only real interesting thing here is there's an on-off switch and that on-off uh, on switch can also be used to turn the radios on and off when it's set in remote mode. It's one of the ways you can do that. Uh, volume, hand mic, and then connection to the radio. Uh, so we've got two of these. And we will uh, do a demonstration of this soon. Okay, next up. What have we here now? These look like batteries, but they're a little different. What's different about them and what are they for? Well, I'll let you read uh, some of the text on there. What this is, is a, uh, it's called a battery insert. It allows you to use AAA batteries or the L, I forget what it is, one, two, three, or CR, I'm, I'm not sure, but it's a short sort of fat, maybe kind of like a photo battery. I forget the exact number. Um, and, uh, or I think you, I think this is, or triple A, a double A bat, four double A batteries. 
Now, what would this what would this be for? Well, it is for the ASIP radios, which are the Singars ASIP 1523, you know, B C D E F, or the in this case the R F. I'm sorry, the R T 1702 E. Uh, why do we use these? The, the the larger radios, the other radios, the 14. 39, is it? Uh, the, the wide body, older style Singars radios have hub battery built into them. Uh, on some, on the earlier models, it's in the back. On the later models, like B or later or E, C, so rather, it's on the front. Not this, but the wider, wider version. But these radios have no hold up battery. So instead, what you do is you open the battery pack, the battery door, and you install this insert, let's see if I can, maybe I'll put this down to show it. We install this battery here. And it acts as a holdup battery. Uh, this radio, why is a holdup battery important? The holdup battery, the holdup battery keeps all of your fill data, frequency, uh, cryptography, um, power levels, all, you know, your, your, uh, your channels, everything's set up and stored in this fill data. And if you, if the radio does not have a battery, which it normally doesn't in a vehicular configuration, uh, it's relying on the battery of the vehicle, uh, and it's in the battery of the vehicle is turned off, or this is turned off, or the radio is removed, there's going to be no holdup battery and all of your fill information will be lost. So what they do is they create this uh, insert and uh, you know, you, you put the battery door back on and you put it, let's see, you put this into the trim or you know, the, the standard mount. Uh, and so now even if the, the vehicle loses power or um, disconnected for some reason, you won't lose your fill. The radio does have a 15 minute super cap. This is super cap's kind of like a very, very large capacitor which will hold the um, will hold the fill data, but only for about 15 minutes. Uh, and so if you want to hold it for longer than that and your, your vehicle's going in storage or what have you, um, you know, you use these battery inserts. So I do plan to use these battery inserts so I don't lose the fill data. Next up. Okay, I have been looking for these for several years and I've never even found one of them ever uh, on the surplus market. What is it? Let's take a look at one of them. Let's pull one out. What is it? Well, the, the RF, the Harris, RF 7800M MP, which is the man pack version and the NATO version of the PRC 117G. It's the small, it's the narrow uh, 30 to 2000 megahertz, 30 to two gig, 30 megahertz, two gig radio. And uh, when it's used in the vehicular configuration with the 50 watt amp, I'll, I'll uh, insert some pictures of what I'm talking about here. Uh, you, there's not a good way to lock it in so it's not stolen. And you know, anytime you've got radios in a vehicle, uh, in this case my Land Rover, um, which I've got a lot of stuff installed, you really do want to find locks. And what this does is it it fits onto the front of the radio. Uh, actually, I think it goes this way. Uh, and prevents you from accessing. There's, there's a knob that you unscrew to release the radio. It's kind of like a thumb, a thumb twister thing. So this goes on, it locks in. You put a, you put a padlock through here. And it prevents you from opening up the, the lock. Uh, and also here, Perb. I, I even spent the time at one time trying to model this based on pictures and based on measurements of my amp uh, and mount to see if I could uh, design this in a 3D modeling program uh, and maybe make my own because I was really getting desperate. I didn't want to have a, uh, that radio uh, not lockable in the vehicle. So, but I finally found them and uh, um, picked up uh, a total of four while, while I was getting them because who knows when I'll ever see them again next. Okay, I always try to save the best for last. So let's get the big heavy item out of this box. Uh, 
this hobby is not for the weak, uh, which I include myself in. Okay, hopefully this is, this is in frame here. Let's take this off. What have we here? This is brand new, in brand spanking new. Even has the uh, the escape proof guarantee. I have no idea what that is. U.S. Department of Justice. Okay, don't know what all any of that stuff is. Uh, this, I'll uh, have you give a little tour of it. Let's look at the front. Okay, Let's get this stuff out here too. This is a second amplifier, uh, an external amplifier for uh, the Singar system. This can be used either with the traditional 7239 wide body uh, VAA, a vehicular amplifier adapter, or in my case, how I'm going to be using it is as a second amplifier to my uh, TRM, the narrow ASIP system. Uh, this is uh, quite beautiful. Let's take a look at some of the designations here. We can see this. Amplifier radio frequency 7238B. This is a fairly standard amplifier um, used in pretty much all the Singar setups. And the mount is what makes it unique, which is the MT6353 mounting base electrical equipment. And uh, let's take a look uh, at how this is going to be how this is going to be used. I also have some mounting hardware with it. So as you might remember from some previous videos, uh, where I sort of detailed this TRM mount system uh, with the two ASIP radios, 1702 radios. Um, the story there that you might remember is there is already an amplifier for this 50 watt amplifier, this unit here, same identical one as that. But it's only available for the lower radio. Why is that? Because in this setup, what you see here, I think it's a VRC91. And that means that there's a long range radio and a short range radio. And for example, in a, uh, in a retransmit situation, you might want to have this one up on a, a connected to an antenna um, up on a hilltop for the long range and allows the people down in the valley, for example, to communicate back to HQ. And then this one might be for local, the, the, the base up on the mountaintop, uh, the people on the mountaintop who don't need high power. And so you can just get away with, you know, 10 watts. I think this is 10 watts, uh, five or 10 watts, I forget exactly. But in, in, so what is this external amp for? This amp allows you to create a, I think it's a VRC 92, uh, which is uh, which means that both radios are high power radios, and um, this uh, there are pictures of it mounted on the on the left uh, the right side, uh, but I've also seen pictures of this mounted on the left side, so it could be really mounted on either side. Um, what's interesting though is that these cables, the cables that need to connect to it are clocked such that the cables exit to this side. So it is likely uh, that when I do install this in my Land Rover, that I will install it on the right side. Haven't decided, have to line everything up. I have to see what kind of clearance uh, I need to allow for these connectors, um, control monitors, etc. cetera. Uh, but that's sort of look. Okay, well, that's it for today. Uh, on the next video, well, I don't know if the exact next video, a future video, uh, we will start uh, hooking everything up. We'll get the speakers operational. Um, we'll get the amplifiers operational. And we'll do some testing uh, for power out and basic operation of the system. <music>